What is good YouTube? My name is George. Welcome to another video. So you want to know something super crazy? It's officially been one year since I graduated from college. I got the shirt on to celebrate, which also means it's been a full year of doing YouTube full time. I've been on a super nostalgia trip during the quarantine. There's just a lot of time to contemplate life in the past and think about where I've been and where I'm going. So I'm going to continue on that trend today. And since it's been a year of doing YouTube full time, I thought I'd take you guys through my entire YouTube journey. From the day I started of my channel through middle school, high school, college, and then talk about how it's been doing it full time. It's actually crazy because over a year ago, I actually wrote down in my calendar on May 2020, I have it right here, that I should do a one year since graduation reflection just for myself. I also want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. You guys know Skillshare by now. They've been supporting many of my videos, which I really appreciate. I've also been seeing a lot of your comments. You guys are checking out Skillshare and digging it, which makes me super stoked. If if you haven't heard from me already, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and millions of members. And there is just so much good knowledge and creativity and inspiration on Skillshare. Just to give you a couple of examples, here is a class called iPhone Photo Editing, how to edit photos like a pro using Lightroom Mobile CC. So if you wanna step up your Instagram game, this is the perfect class for you. Another class that I just came across that I'm super excited to dig into is called Email Productivity, Work Smarter With Your Inbox. And this is the perfect example of why I love Skillshare. They really just cover so many different bases. If you want to check out Skillshare for yourself and try out a class, you can click the link at the top of my description. The first 1,000 people to do so will get a free two-month trial of Skillshare Premium. If you decide to keep at it after that, Skillshare comes out to less than $10 a month for an annual plan. Cheers to Skillshare for supporting the channel, and let's get into my YouTube journey. I've tried my best to break down this journey into different phases and phase one is from 2007 to 2010. So this is when I was in middle school. I created my channel in 07. The first video posted was May 13th, 2007, which funny enough is just about 13 years ago. As a kid, like a lot of kids, I think I just got obsessed with various different things. I remember I had a huge magic phase at like doing card tricks and shit. I got super into Rubik's cubes. I just had all these random little phases and skateboarding was one of my biggest obsessions, of course. And when I found out about YouTube and some of my friends were posting videos, that became my new obsession. Video cameras, editing, I used Windows Movie Maker at the time. I think my first camera for YouTube was a flip video camera, which was this cute little white and orange thing and the USB flipped out and you could just plug it into your computer. And basically I would just film very low effort videos of myself skating in my basement, sometimes doing other goofy things. Essentially just being a kid, exploring new hobby was all it was. Funny enough, I even had YouTuber-like videos such as a bedroom tour. Let's check this one out. Probably gonna be super cringe. Hi everyone. This is my new cam- You guys think I should grow my hair out like that again with the bangs and everything? It's getting there. What do you guys think? Camera that I'm filming with to flip video ultra. Look at the decks on my wall. Kind of sick. I am in my cowboy pajamas because I just took a shower and it's nighttime. Honestly, I admire how much I didn't give a f And I go to sleep in pajamas. He's got a point. Here's a Rubik's Cube. See, I told you. That's hilarious. My record is one minute. 43 seconds, pretty impressive. Such a little kid video. There's like no substance to it. And funny enough, I had great YouTuber instincts already. I mean, look at the title. That's excellent clickbait. 200K? What? That's wild. Gotta love the Windows Movie Maker title screens. I loved slow mowing every single trick. I just, but yeah, and as you could see, I had this awesome little section in the basement that my parents let me trick out with like the flat bar. My dad and I made that box together that you saw in the background. I actually remember we made this box according to some blueprints and it was way too tall for me as a little kid. So we actually sawed the legs in half. That was a great box, learned a lot of my basic grinds on there. And of course I filmed them. My first no slide right there. Spray painted here, it says Big G. That was a nickname I had at my summer day camp at around this time. And that may be the Bam Margera symbol right there, the heart thingy. I was also super into tech at the time. Here I have a review of a phone for some reason. This is a review on 
The Verizon Samsung Glide. Look at that thing, man. Look, I got the Rubik's Cube wallpaper. An awesome phone. Funny enough, I actually had like a secret tech channel that I didn't tell anybody about because I was embarrassed about it. I made like jailbreak videos. Some of them did super well. I was just like, you know, this was one of my childhood obsessions. We gotta check something out here. Let's check out my desk setup video. Yo guys, this is George. And I'm gonna be making a video of a desk slash room tour. Yo, there's my, that right there is a Panasonic PVGS80. I had a fisheye on it. It took mini DV tapes. What a time. There it is. That's broken off too, the actual front piece. Look at that camera. Holy cow. All right, this is pretty non-interesting, but yeah, I had a secret tech channel. <laughs> so back to the main channel now. Here's a video that actually shows what my channel looked like in 2009. And this really hits the nostalgia button for me. YouTube just felt so incredibly different back then. It was not even owned by Google. There was a huge emphasis on community and YouTube would really push small creators. It was just such a different place. As you can see there, my username was Skater Musicians. The story behind that is that I really wanted to make my YouTube channel, but it was such a new thing that my parents were like a little sketchy about it. They didn't want me to put my name on the username. So the agreement we came to in order for me to have a YouTube channel was that it had to be a shared channel with my sister. At the time she played the violin, I was a skater, hence the plural username, Skater Musicians. I don't think I actually ended up changing it until I was in college. But let's take a look at what my channel used to look like. And let's appreciate my prepubescent voice one more time. Hey guys, this is George. Look at that, it's so different. You could have a background image on your channel. It's almost more like a social media profile. 1,504 subscribers. Oh, so this video is me talking about how I hit 1,500 subscribers. And I remember at this time, I would relentlessly sub for sub. And I would meet all these other skaters through that. And I really formed this community. It was like genuinely the start of my channel, even though sub for sub is like not accepted anymore. Yo, I blazed my way to 1,500 by doing sub for sub. But the funny thing is, it was like mostly actual skate channels as well. Well, look at that. It even says how many videos I've watched. What a funny thing to put on a channel. Here you can see videos in one to two weeks. Yeah, I have finals. My parents won't let me skate. I have to study. I can't believe I straight up said that on YouTube where they could see that. Look how different it is. These are the people I'm subscribed to and you can see all the different skate channels. Solid Skater 900, 1060, oh, that was actually my friend Max. Problem Skater, Skateboard. Oh my gosh, and I forgot you used to rate the videos out of five stars instead of even liking them. What a trip. So yeah, that was phase one and you can see by 2010, I'm already a little bit better at skateboarding. I kind of look like I have control over the board. I'm already skating switch. Yeah, the start of this YouTube journey really coincided with my development as a skateboarder as well, and I just always loved filming my skateboarding. It's still so nostalgic to think about YouTube skateboarding in this day. It was such a different world. So many people like me who film themselves skating in their basements, and now who knows what the heck they're doing. Hopefully still skateboarding. So that was phase one, the middle school days. Let's move on to phase two, which I am calling it from 2011 to 2014, which is the start of high school up until junior year of high school. I think that when I started high school, I really started caring way too much what other people thought about me. And I started getting super self-conscious about my channel. My friends would call me skater musicians to be funny and I couldn't tell like if they were actually being funny or if they were making fun of me. So I definitely got way more low key about my channel. I started kind of only posting skateboarding clips because I thought that was like acceptable to post. This was also a time where I started focusing on school now. My parents always, always nailed it in my head that I had to get good grades. It was almost like this trade-off, like if I continue to perform well in school, then I could continue skating as much as I wanted. So that made me really motivated to do well in school, but kind of took my focus away from YouTube as well. Yeah, growing up is weird. The videos turned more into like skate montages like this one here at the Livingston Skate Park. I was juiced about this Smith, yo. I was like, holy crap, I'm buck now. <laughs> Here's actually one of the hardest tricks I've done in my life to this day. This rail was like way too tall for my skill level at the time. I remember jumping on so many times and my board didn't even get up. I don't know how I survived. This took two days. I scraped my hands like crazy on the floor. I just like couldn't handle this, but I managed to pull it off.
It's actually at my high school there. So yeah, there's not much else to say about this phase. It was very focused on the skateboarding. The videos were far less frequent and I was really worried about what people in high school thought about me and I was worried they were judging me for my channel. And I think really that ultimately led to me just kind of taking a big break. And that brings me to phase three, which is not really a phase at all. It was basically a period where I was barely posting whatsoever. And I'd call this like late 2014 to 2015. So 2015 was the year I was graduating from high school. I was focusing intensely on my college applications because that's just what I had to do. That was the way I was raised and that's just what I did. This is definitely the period where YouTube really started slipping away from my identity, like the most it ever has. As you can see in 2015, I posted three videos. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess I was just focused on other things. As you can see, I made a video about an app that I made. What's up, people? This is a screen recording of the app I've been building since February. I was very self-conscious about my monotone voice. I used to get roasted for it all the time. You know how I had all those phases that I mentioned, like the Rubik's Cube phase, the magic tricks phase. One that I had in later high school was coding and making iPhone apps. I really dove myself into this. I taught myself coding just using YouTube tutorials. This is like a whole ass social media app that I made. And looking back on it, it's like, I can't tell if I was really passionate about this or if the pressure of life started to get to me because I think maybe I was convincing myself I had to learn some practical skill that could get me like a career and make me look good for colleges. And I think that was a huge motivating force of why I de-emphasized my YouTube channel and started diving my head into this coding stuff. And honestly, I wish I could have done it differently. I wish that I stayed passionate about my YouTube channel because I know there was passion in there. But I think I was worrying about one, my friends, two, these college applications. And I just assumed that skateboarding and YouTube would make make me look like a bum. That was like deeply internalized in me. So I pivoted to this coding thing that, you know, I, I can't tell. I can't say with certainty whether I was truly passionate about it or not. I went on to major in computer science and I enjoyed the major, but literally right after college, I stopped dead. I don't do any coding anymore. Way more like deeply passionate about my YouTube channel. I think I let too much bullshit get to me, you know? And I think that's why I slowed down posting videos. But that brings us to phase four, which started in 2016. Something started bubbling up inside of me. I started to get to know myself a little bit better. I started to really internalize and believe in this idea that living for society standards is bullshit and that's no way to become happy. The way to become happy is to be true to your heart. That's like the whole message behind my brand, Aeroskateco. I wanted to make sure I didn't get so distracted by college classes and computer science that I gave up skateboarding. So my thinking was that if I always have to post a video every three days about skateboarding, then there's no way I'm going to to give up skateboarding. So it really was a tool for myself at the time. There wasn't much thinking about like YouTube will be my career, you know, it just sort of happened that way. This video, Day in the Life One Winter Break, which was my winter break of freshman year of college, this is what I consider to be my first YouTube video because it's the first video where I was actually committed to posting YouTube videos regularly. And I think that decision, that decision to stick to an upload schedule, I think that's what set off my career. When I started, I was really just doing it to do it and I was posting every three days the videos were so simple this day in the life is like barely edited there's no music I just chopped everything together there's a lot of really short simple videos like this lip slide big spin the process on my college campus so yeah, you know, this kept me on my board. This kept me trying new tricks because I wanted to make good videos. And you know, I'm super grateful I did this because obviously this is the basis of what is now my career. But I also get to look back on these very special memories, you know? And that's one of the best parts about being a content creator is you just build up all these memories. Honestly, respect to myself for skating this ledge in the middle of campus, not giving a f just doing it. It's almost like I returned to that not giving a f phase that I had when I first made my channel, you know? Yeah, I definitely started getting more YouTube-y, like I made shoe reviews, I got better at the clickbait and the thumbnails. You know, still the videos, as you could see, a lot of them are like three minutes long. So it was super easy to keep up that every three day schedule. And you know, I was really reconnecting to the fun that I used to have on YouTube. And it was really a way for me to decompress, chill out. It was like, this is what I love doing. So this was my break from the stress of college, thinking about careers, homework, tests, whatever. This was the passion, this was the relax mode, which is funny to think about because now YouTube is work. 
and it's so interesting how that all played out. Still at this time, I think I was pretty self-conscious about my channel. I didn't really tell many of my friends about it yet. I definitely didn't tell adults and professors and people like that. Like I wouldn't share that at all. When people asked about me, this is something that I kept hidden, which is sad to say now because I embrace the crap out of my YouTube channel. It's part of my identity. I wish I was stronger in that way back then, but you know, it's part of the growing up process. We're self-conscious about the things we love sometimes because it could be embarrassing if somebody doesn't understand it. But now that I've kind of matured a little bit more, I definitely believe we should be proud of what we love because that makes us who we are, you know? You know, just be yourself is what it comes down to at the end of the day. Sick Nolly Crook. So not kidding, once I said I was gonna post every three days ago, I did not miss a video. Through 2016, through 2017, actually, I mean, I never stopped since then till today. My video schedule has changed. Obviously now I'm doing weekly. My videos slowly, slowly progressed, got longer, more detailed. I show more personality, got more comfortable on camera. But something crazy happened to me all in April of 2016. I had a video go madly viral. This video is still going viral, which blows my mind. There's not much to it. I think I was a little bit injured at the time. So I was actually just standing here filming with my phone with a clip on wide angle lens attached. There was just a lot of scooter kids being hectic. And I was just filming my friends trying to skate. It was a very funny scene. I ended up with this clickbait title, which does not capture my true sentiment. I believe you guys know that. And this video quickly and immediately exploded. And I think it might be worth taking a look at my analytics because this sh opened my eyes to the potential for YouTube and being a job. So check this out, yo. Here's how my channel is looking when I started posting videos. And then look at this spike when this viral video came out. That sh is enormous. It blew my freaking mind. After things settled down after that big spike, I'm still getting way more views than I did before that spike. You know, that was the first spark of like, maybe this can be a job one day. So, you know, I kept posting. I was really adamant about like, keep posting. That is the way. And you can see the numbers started to drop off again, but then they slowly, 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 very slowly, and surely pick up. There's really not another spike like that in my whole career. Today, I'm still staying pretty much below that spike. I think my lifetime analytics here really show you how it's all about consistency. Look at this dip this fat dip. I could have given up here, you know? And then I would have never gotten to this point where YouTube is my full-time job. You know, it really is so gnarly to think about and I'm grateful that I internalize this idea that it's all the YouTube upload schedule. And when you take that across four to five years, you know, it just, everything snowballs and builds on top of each other. Not only your audience growth, but your own progress and how good you are at doing YouTube. So through college, I kept doing my thing, kept sticking to my video upload schedule and the videos really did progress. I think by senior year, I was competent at YouTube. Like I kind of knew what I was doing at that point. And I really do consider the start of my senior year, the next phase of my journey, because I started the senior year series where I was going to like officially document my senior year of college. So here's the first video, my senior year skateboard setup, and I'm filming it right in front of my senior house. I remember at this point in time, like the memories were just as important as the skateboarding. It was about capturing my life and what I was going through so that I could always look back on it. And of course, like when I started the video upload schedule, it remained to be about keeping myself accountable to skateboarding and documenting, sharing my love of skateboarding. And definitely by senior year, the idea that I I could try to do YouTube as my job was a much more serious thought in my head. And honestly, it was a scary thought. That's a scary thing to do. Um, in my mind, the safe thing to do was going to be to go the traditional route of getting like a corporate job after college. Just how when I was in high school, applying to college was just what I did because that's how I was raised. It was the same thing for getting a normal job after college. But this awareness that built inside of me that it's better to choose what makes you happy based on your own heart, that really started taking over and you know that's what made the idea of doing YouTube and skating full-time after school more of a realistic thought I remember this clip I had my friends fake say hello to me because this was like when we just returned to campus so after we said the real hellos and hugs we did the fake ones because you know I wanted to I wanted that special feeling to be documented and you know how happy it makes me that I can watch this I mean, now that all four years of college have just somehow flown by plus one, I'm so grateful that I decided to do this. And you know, truly accepting that this is what I love and this is who I am, 
Of course, that helped me progress even more at this stuff. And it's crazy because literally right near the end of college, also right when I turned 22 years old, I hit 100,000 subscribers. And you know, that's a serious number, yo. Like I freaking cried, dude. It's also right as the spring is landing. Got him, got him. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> Comforting. So yeah, you know, the, the 100K number is incredibly symbolic on YouTube of all the hard work that it takes to get there. You know, I really did bust my ass for this shit. Like, on top of staying on top of schoolwork, so many freaking crazy nights trying to finish the video. But it was so important to me, you know, because it was all linked to how important skateboarding was to me. I feel like for me, like 100K really instilled this confidence in me because graduation was in a month. Like, if I wasn't going to be doing YouTube, I should have been applying to jobs. But at this point, I was like pretty sure, like, I have to give it a try. Like, how could I not give it a try, you know? So, you know, I opened it up with my first setup of senior year closed it out with my last skate setup as a college student. You know, just capturing the places and people that made up those last four years. And you know, <laughs> after that I just kind of kept going. It took a long time to process the fact that I had graduated and that I was doing YouTube full time. Honestly, I think it took up until the quarantine started, really. That's when things like really started sinking in. Oh, and definitely moving out. That was hugely symbolic for me. And I think that is really what initiated the new phase that I'm in, which is like YouTube is like seriously my job now. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. It's like what I do. It's a very different relationship than what I used to have in college because in college, YouTube was my escape from the stresses of college life. But now YouTube is my work life and I rely on it for my income. You know, there's a whole lot of intricacies that are different about it now. I'm still deeply, deeply grateful for it and I love doing it with all my heart. But yeah, now it's like I have my work, YouTube and skateboarding life and then I also have my personal skateboarding life where I'm not filming. I'm figuring out how to do YouTube as a business, you know? Like still putting heart and soul into it but also trying to develop a consistent work schedule and plan things ahead. Definitely investing in my workspace, trying to make everything flow as smoothly as possible. Like I got this freaking incredible setup now, which is just beautiful and it makes my life so much easier. And there's definitely a whole new level of YouTube competency, even compared with when I started senior year. Like now I really feel like I know what I'm doing. I've been on the platform since its inception pretty much. And I'm in this neighborhood in New York City, surrounded by other YouTubers and creative people. So I really am in this new place, just thrown into it, you know? Like this is my world now and it's, it's super exciting. To think that I'm here now because I decided in 2016 to start posting a video schedule is nuts. As I say here right now, I can't control what I decided four years ago. All I can do is be happy that I decided that and of course take that as a realization that I don't freaking know. You know, I think the same thing about skateboarding, how grateful I am that I decided to start skateboarding at eight years old. This far into the future, it's really just luck that I decided to do that in the past, which is an interesting thought experiment. But yeah, you know, if you're going to take any inspiration inspiration from this, I would say definitely listen to what your heart says about what you love doing and don't feel like you can't accept what you yourself love, like accept it, do it, share it with everybody. And you know, doing things consistently makes you better at it. I think those are two very valuable lessons that have brought me to this position. And yeah, now it's been a freaking year of doing this full time. And I think when I graduated a year ago, I wasn't sure how I would feel right now, but right now I'm super happy with where I'm at. I'm loving this process of getting better at YouTube, figuring out how to find the right work-life balance, making friends who are in the same space, living in New York City, you know, overall things are pretty good for me. And I'm so grateful for that and grateful for all of you for tuning in and making that possible. You know, I can't see too far out, but I definitely think I'll be doing this for at least a few more years, you know? And even if I pivot to something else in my life at some point, I believe I'll always be posting on YouTube just as a memory bank and just for the passion of it, because I really do love this. It's rooted in my childhood, just like skateboarding. These are things that I'll never give up, no matter what. What, really and I think that might be my YouTube journey up to this point from 
2007 all the way to 2020. What a freaking journey it's been, man. Anyways, yeah, wow. Don't forget to check out Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Link is right at the top. I appreciate you guys. I hope you're all doing well. I mean that sincerely. Let me know what's up in the comments and shred on, take it easy. I'll catch you guys next week with another video. Am I really done filming this? Writing down plans for videos is another thing that I've learned over the years. Super helpful. Yeah.